Hello, you're watching section 6.6, 6, Sequences and Expressions. Um, as always, go ahead and press pause and write all the information down. Um, when you're ready, um, press play and we'll continue. So a sequence is a list of numbers in a specific order. Okay, so any list of numbers with a specific order. So whether you're doing a list like this, okay, and you'll be able to see a pattern. I'm going adding 2 onto each number or if I'm doing something like this, where I am multiplying 3 times 3, 9 times 3, okay, so on and so forth. There's going to be some order to the numbers, okay? A term is each number in the list of your sequence. So my terms here are 2, 4, 6. So if you're trying to find the fifth term, you would go out two more numbers. So my fourth term would be 8, my fifth term would be 10. Okay, so the term is actually each individual number. So when they ask you to find the third term or the next three terms, you're talking about the next three numbers. An arithmetic sequence is each term is found by adding the same number to the previous number. Now this part's important because a sequence does not have to be adding the same number to each term, but an arithmetic sequence does have to be. Okay, so if you're solving an arithmetic sequence, you know that you're going to be adding the same number to each term. Your sequences are going to be set up in both tables and as lists. Okay, in the table, they're going to tell you the position of the number, and this is just telling you what term it is in the sequence. This is my first term, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and then this gives you the actual value of the term. Okay. <clears throat> You can also see that they just list them out. So this is first, second, third, fourth, okay? Um, whatever way is easiest for you to understand, okay, is fine. Now you'll notice when it's repeated addition, we can also write it as a multiplication problem. So if I take 8 times n, meaning the position or the term, okay, I can multiply by whatever term I want, 8 times that term, and that's going to give you the number. So if I'm looking for the 50th, term, I can take 8 times 50 equals 400, and the 8 comes from knowing that I'm adding 8 to each number to get the next, okay? And you'll notice if I multiply 8 times 1, I get 8, 8 times 2, I get 16, times 3, 24, times 4, 32, so you're going to be able to create a pattern, okay? And that's what you're trying to distinguish here when you're doing sequences. So our first problem says use words and symbols to describe the value of each term as a function of its position. Then find the value of the tenth term. So I'm supposed to use words and symbols. Okay, so I see my position, 1. Position 1 is 7, and I like to write it out like this. 14 is my second number, 21 is the third, 28 is the fourth. So you'll notice in this arithmetic sequence what I'm doing is I'm adding 7 to each term. So in words I could put you add 7 to each term. Okay. In symbols I know that I'm taking 7 and I'm multiplying it by the position by n to get my value of that term. So in symbols, I'm going to write 7n, and I'm using n because that's what I have here. Okay, now the n is going to represent the position. So if I need to find the value of the tenth term, it's going to be the tenth number, so the tenth position. So I'm going to take 7 times 10, which is 70. Okay, so here's my three answers in words, in symbols, and then my tenth term. If you don't want to put add 7 to each term, you can also say multiply the position by 7. And that would give you the same thing. These represent the same thing. Okay. Now I don't want to take n plus 7 because that doesn't make sense. Okay. This is n is 1. If I take 7 plus 1, you get 8. That's not 7. 7 plus 2 is 9, that's not 14. So I'm not adding 7 to the position, I'm adding 7 to the term before it. Okay, so make sure you're paying attention to that as well. 
doing the same thing here. So I'm going to tell it in words, symbols. Okay, and I need to find my tenth term. Okay, so now this is starting at four. Notice that as well. <clears throat> and what you're doing is you're adding one to each term to get the next. Okay, so in words, you add, my goodness, get my pen to work here. You can put, I add one to the term to get the next. Okay, now you'll notice that I'm not doing 4 plus 1, that's 6. Okay, so in order to figure out using your position, which is n, you need to figure out what you're doing to the 4 to get the 6, what I'm doing to the 5 to get the 7, what I'm doing to the 6 to get the 8, what I'm doing to 7 to get the 9. And what you're doing is you are adding 2 to the position, n, to get my term. So my symbol is n plus 2. Two. So in symbols, you're telling me what I did to do to the position. What do I do to the n to get the term? What am I doing to the 7 to get the 9, the 6 to get the 8, and so on? Okay, so to find my 10th term, I'm going to take 10 plus 2, which I know to be 12, and there's my answer. So if you would rather, in words, instead of, add, say, adding 1 to the term to get the next, you can also say add 2 to the position. Okay, you're adding 2 to the position to find the value of the term. Okay, both of those would be correct answers. Okay. And here's our next problem. It says there are 60 seconds in one minute. Make a table and write an algebraic expression relating the number of seconds to the number of minutes. Then find how many seconds it will it takes Sherry to walk to school if it takes her 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to create my table. And what you're doing is you're taking your minutes. Okay, and you're converting them to seconds. So I have, and I'm going to put 1 would be 60 seconds, 2 minutes would be 120 seconds, 3 minutes would be 180 seconds, and so on. And I want to know n. Okay, what am I doing to n to get that? So you'll notice that I'm adding 60 each time. But what am I doing to the position? I don't want to add 69 times. You can do that to each number to get the next. But you also know I can take my position, which would be 1, and I'm multiplying it by 60. 2 times 60 is 120. 3 times 60 is 180. So if I want to find 9 minutes, I'm going to take 9 times 60 to get the seconds. Okay, so... 9 times 0 is 0, 6 times 9 is 54, so the answer is 540 seconds. Okay, and make sure you answer that question. So it says, then find how many seconds it takes Sherry to walk to school if it takes her 9 minutes. It takes Sherry 540, oops, wrong thing here. 540 seconds to walk to school. Okay, and my last one. It says the table shows the number of plants in a garden based on the number of rows. Which expression was used to find the number of plants in n rows? Okay, so you're trying to figure out what am I doing to the one to get four? Okay, because they give me my answers, I can plug them in. So 1 plus 3 is 4. That one works. 1 minus 3 is not 4. That does not work. 1 times 3 is 3, not 4. That one won't work. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. So that one works. So I need to decide between these two. So I'm going to go to 2. 2 plus 3 is 5, not 7. 
3 plus 3 is 6, not 10. 4 plus 3 is 7, not 13. So I know now A does not work. Okay, so I'm going to go to D. 2 times 3 is 6. So you're doing 3 times N, so N is 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. That works. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. That works. So you're going to plug in my N to each expression until I find the one that is the correct one. So my answer is D. Okay, that's my correct solution. All right, and since it gives me the solutions, I'm just going to plug them in to the problem until I find my correct answer. Okay? Well, as always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions for Mr. Coyne or I tomorrow, make sure you ask. Um, thanks for watching.